Hi. Hi. This is Mr. and Mrs. Lazy R. <laughs> Tom. Heather. And this is our first video for this channel. So we're going to have a toast because Tom is making eggnog based on uh, Alton Brown's recipe, uh, which you can find on altonbrown.com. We'll put a link in the description. This is our first time not only doing video but for this channel, but our, also our first time making this recipe. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Mmm, smells good. Thank you. I like to see it. Let's get started. As we said, we're going to be making eggnog today. This is actually an aged eggnog, so once we're done, we're going to have to let it sit in the refrigerator for at least a few weeks before we're able to um, enjoy it. Um, and there's a couple of good reasons for that. One, it's going to taste delicious after it's aged for a few weeks. And two, because since it's eggnog, of course, we're using eggs, and these eggs are raw, they're not cooked. And um, a lot of people, you know, may be concerned about whether or not you could get possibly get sick. There was a study done several years ago by a laboratory of uh, bacterial pathogenesis and immunology at Rock Rockefeller University, and they basically took a recipe for aged eggnog, and they deliberately contaminated the eggs with salmonella and to, to test the theory out as to whether alcohol could actually kill the bacteria. So they put the egg nog in the refrigerator and after a day they tested it and there was still salmonella present so they put it back and after a week they tested it again and the salmonella was less but it was still active. And they found that the sweet spot was three weeks so after three weeks the salmonella was completely dead, inactive and um, you should be fine, but if you're still worried about it, you can get pasteurized eggs. Um, and uh, you can even look online and possibly find a different recipe. There are other recipes for eggnog that are actually cooked. So you can find one where you actually heat the eggs and pasteurize them yourself. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is we're using 12 eggs, so we need to separate these eggs. And we're going to, because well, we're only going to use the yolks. So I've got a couple of containers here that I'm going to put the whites in too because I need to put a few of these whites in for a recipe that we're going to try later for some macarons which are some cookies so I'm going to crack these eggs and for separating them you basically just pull them apart and just kind of toss the yolk back and forth and let the white just kind of fall out And when you have just pretty much just yolk, just drop it in the bowl. Make sure that you keep things straight and you don't accidentally put your whites in your yolk pile. So we need three yolks for our cookie recipe that we're going to be making later. So You mean our whites? We need whites. Three now. whites, that's correct. Thank you. So there's three. We'll put the rest in here. We'll use them for meringues. Know, meringues or something later. Oh! You need to fish that one out. Oh. Oh, I can't use the egg whites if there's even a little yolk. I can't use it for meringues. Might have to just make scrambled eggs out of that. <laughs> okay, maybe they'll be quiet. Are you going to be quiet? Thank you. Ready? Mm hmm Okay, now we have our 12 egg yolks. Next thing we need is a pound of sugar. So I've got a scale here, I'm just going to pour until I get a pound. I figured a pound is a little more than two cups, about two and a third. 
one pound. Now, those of you familiar with eggnog probably know that eggnog usually has nutmeg in it. We are going with allspice because we are a no nutmeg family. Oh, well, I like nutmeg. I just can't have it. Yeah. One teaspoon. So I've got a quarter teaspoon measure here, so I'm just measuring it out four times. So I'm going to get the whisk out. This was your dad's KitchenAid, right? Yes. Do you know what year he got it? Um, this KitchenAid? No, I don't. It's probably 10 or 15 years old. Something like that. Okay, so here we have our 12 eggs, one pound of sugar, and a teaspoon of allspice. And we want to whip this up. Basically, you want to whip it until it lightens in color and kind of falls off the whisk, kind of like in a ribbon. So we're going to whip it up some, we're going to watch it until the color changes and then we're going to take it out, we're going to test it, see how it looks. Just going to scrape the bowl a little bit because some of the sugar and allspice has kind of, kind of got stuck to the side. It looks a little gritty, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Did he give a guide about how long it's supposed to take? No. color. Can you tilt it? I can't see it. Okay. Is it foamy? No. No? No. It's making it's ribbons. Ribbon? Yeah, it's making ribbons. It's not as smooth as I thought it was going to be though. It's like the sugar isn't dissolved all the way yet. Do you think? Yeah. Maybe it would have been better if the eggs were closer to room temperature when we use them. That could be. Well, you're going to be working on another part of the recipe, right, and coming back to this? Yeah. So maybe it could just sit in the mixer and wait, unless you're using the mixer again. And then, um, oh, it's falling down into your batter. Whatever. Your, yeah. your, your whisk. The whisk? Yeah, it's fine. Well, I'm just saying you might want to whisk it again later. Yeah, when it's a the top is, top is sticking out, so I can pull it up and set it in the Okay. Sure well, it's sticking sure. out for now. <laughs> okay, the next thing I want to do is mix up our dairy and our alcohol. This recipe calls for rum, bourbon, and cognac. I separated out the Jack Daniels last night because we all wanted to, well, I wanted to try a shot and I didn't want to take too much and not have enough left over for the recipe, so I put the uh, the amount you needed one cup that I needed for the recipe in this container that we were going to use today for, to store it when we put it in the fridge. So that's one cup of bourbon. So we need one cup of rum. The recipe called for Jamaican rum. This one is from Cuba. I think we'll probably be all right. And we need a cup of cognac, which I don't believe that this small bottle of cognac that we got is 200 milliliter, which is a little bit less than seven cup or seven ounces. So I think we're not going to make a cup, so we may just top it off a little bit with with our some more of our rum, just so we have the right amount of alcohol because. This recipe actually yields 20% alcohol by volume. 
and that's kind of like a good amount of alcohol to assure that you're going to be taking care of any pathogens or bacteria that might be in the specifically in the salmonella eggs. specifically right. salmonella yeah For this recipe, we're going to use three different kinds of dairy. I'm going to use a pint of each, half and half, heavy cream, and whole milk. So, these two containers of half and half and heavy cream are exactly a pint, so I'm just going to pour those in. Make sure that the cream doesn't have any solids or anything in here. Mix it up a little bit. Two cups of the milk. Our last ingredient is just a little bit of salt, kosher. Calls for a quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt. Remember, if you're using table salt in place, you use half as much table salt as you do. Is there kosher. a reason to use kosher? Like they don't want iodine in it or something? Uh, it wasn't specified in the recipe, but that's probably a good reason. Plus the fact that if you're familiar with Alton Brown, he uses pretty much uses kosher salt for everything. So just might be his thing. So I'm going to stir that up, just make sure the salt is... dissolved. Next step, of course, is to mix that in with our thing. Look at that, that's turning into... It's quite thick. Quite thick and stiff. Alright, so we want to mix this together now, so... Let's take this. Hopefully this white bowl will take all this volume. I want to get it in here because this has a nice pouring spell on it that I'm going to use for getting this mm -hmm. into the That's going to be containers. Close. When we're ready. So you're not supposed to whisk it in as you do that? Nope. Okay. Just have to get everything incorporated together. I'm ready to try and get these in the jars. Hopefully this spout on this bowl will cooperate. Don't go too fast. I'm going to fill each yeah. one about halfway and then try and even them out. Mm, I'm going to sniff it. I'm going to sniff the... Uh... Well, the allspice settled to the bottom, so try and evenly between the two as well. Maybe with the scraper to not get that. Yeah. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, that smells good! Mmm, that allspice. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing now? I'm going to try and scrape the last of this out of the bowl since there's a little bit of the spice in there. And there was very little spice to begin with. You forgot to put your apron on. <laughs> oh well. I was so excited to get started. Got our lids and our rings for our jars. Put them on there. So these two will now go in the back of the refrigerator um, where they will sit for at least three weeks, longer if possible. Um, of course, it being August, you know, and, and these are hopefully going to last until the holidays, you know, we'll be able to hold on to them for about three months, three, four months. They might so not all can, make it. They, yeah, they might not. That's why there's two. One of the commenters on the website for the recipe said that uh, they had found a jar in their refrigerator that they um, had forgotten about in July. They found it in July. They had made it, I guess, the, the year before, the July or August of the year before they found it in July of the following year, they had forgotten it was there, 
And so it was a it was, year old. Yeah, they said it was phenomenal. It tasted awesome. So this stuff gets definitely gets better with age, apparently. So we're looking forward to seeing how long we can hold out, how long we can keep it. I want to taste it after three to six weeks, though. Yep. And we'll see um, just how good it is. Um, so I guess that's about it. Um, hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to our channel. Thank you.